Hi everyone and welcome back to World of Yohio. Today we're going to talk about things that have influenced us. I will be having a conversation with my good friend Mitsugi. This will be the first guest I invite to this show. Let's get into it. <laughs> So I will start with a little introduction of my guest. Mitsugi is a French-born artist, model and actor. He started to learn Japanese at the age of 10 while he still lived in France, moving around the country two or three times a year. His meeting with Japanese music as a young boy came to change his life forever. And at the age of 19 he packed his bags and moved to Japan. Since then he has been a regular guest on Japanese TV shows, starred in several J-drama series, movies and appeared in commercials for brands like Pocky, McDonald's Japan, Asahi Beer, Domino Pizza, amongst many others. While doing fashion shows and helping famous Japanese actors speak French, his passion for music is what brought him to Japan in the first place. Now he is ready for his comeback as an artist with the single Alchemist out the 28th of August. So, Mitsugi, welcome to the show. Yeah, it's in English today. <laughs> Sorry, I messed up the languages. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Uh, so today's topic is things and people that have influenced us. This can be anything from music to books and movies. It doesn't really matter. Anything that have made an impact on our lives and inspired us in our creative journey. So, Mitsugi, what do you want to start with? Well, you talked about my meeting with Japanese music in the intro, mm -hmm. so let's start with that. Okay, sure. That sounds good. Yeah, uh, when I was around six years old, I went to a city shop close to my home together with my mom. When browsing the store, I found a CD from a Japanese band called La Conciel mm -hmm. that caught my eye. My mom bought the CD for me, and when I go back home, I listened to it and fell in love. It was the first time I heard Japanese rock music. Mm. Up until this point, I had only listened to Western music. I was still young, so I wasn't playing any instruments yet. Mm. But listening to this CD, I was inspired to start playing guitar and thought that I wanted to sing in Japanese. Mm. Listening to a CD can seem like a small thing, but this moment changed my life forever. This was the reason that made me want to start my own band and do music. Mm -hmm. It also made me fall in love with Japan. I really believe in the butterfly effect, maybe you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That however small a thing can change the course of your life. Yeah. Looking back to this moment, 20 years later, I really feel that it had a big impact. Yeah. It was the start of my journey. Even now, at times when I'm feeling lost, I listen to that same city. When I do that, it reminds me of why I'm here and why I'm doing what I do. It gives me strength to keep on going, even when times are tough. Yeah, yeah, I totally understand. We shouldn't underestimate the power of music. So, uh, L'Arcanciel was your first love when it comes to Japanese music. When you came to Japan, have you met anyone from that band? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have actually met them all several times. I still remember the first time. I was 19 years old and I had just moved to Japan. I was helping out uh, at a friend's birthday party, maybe. Mm -hmm. I was receiving the guests and they were mostly famous people. Actors, artists, TV personalities, etc. Mm -hmm. Of course, there were so many people I had seen on TV and in movies. Yeah. And I thought it was very cool to be at the same party as yeah, them. Yeah. But one person made me stop breathing for a while. I was at the bottom of the staircase of the venue. Mm -hmm. And when I looked up, I saw Hyde, the singer of oh, Arcazil, really? walking down the stairs towards me. It was like a dream. <laughs> <laughs> I could barely believe it. My responsibility was to show the guests where to go. Mm -hmm. So I showed him the way and talked a little bit with him. Mm -hmm. I was nervous, but I told him the story of when I was six years old and found his music. And that because of that moment, I now live in Japan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He said that he was happy to hear that and say, let's talk about that over a glass of wine or something. 
and we went to the bar counter and talked for a while. After mm -hmm. that night, I've met him and the rest of the band several times more. Nice. But the important thing I want everyone to understand is that I didn't feel like, oh, no, I've met him, so I accomplished something. It was the opposite for me, mm -hmm. because I had the chance to meet him at such an early age, a few months after I took the leap to move to Japan and chase my dreams. Yeah. I felt like it was a trigger for me to do my best. Mm -hmm. That someday, if I work hard, he will see what I've accomplished and maybe remember that young boy that just came to Japan. Wow, I love stories like this. It really is amazing how certain people can have such a huge impact on our lives. Yeah, 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 that's true. So, what about you? Do you have someone special like that? Yeah, yeah, I do. Mm -hmm. If we're talking about artists, uh, the one that has influenced me most as a person is Gact. Oh, yeah. I love his music and I really respect him as a human being. Mm. So when I was 15 years old, I played at a big festival in Japan with my first band, Ceremony. Oh, yeah, I uh, yeah, and Gact was also playing the festival and we were on stage just before him. I remember going into the arena and uh, watching their sound check. And just by seeing him on stage like that made me awestruck. <laughs> it was the first time I saw him in person like that. Mm. When I was backstage in our dressing room after the show, someone knocked on the door and came into the room. Oh. And it was gacked. Wow. I was in shock for real. Like uh, He was right there before my eyes. And this was in the start of my career. And I hadn't met that many famous people yet. So he said, hi, I'm Gak, nice to meet you, and uh, shook my hand. <laughs> so uh, I introduced myself, but I was too nervous back then to actually tell him how much he meant to me in my life. So I just asked him for a picture, and uh, then he said, good luck with everything, and went back to his dressing room. Wow. That moment had a big impact on me, and uh, just the fact that he wished me good luck made me feel like I needed to work harder. Very similar to your story, Mitsugi. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, then a year later, I made my solo debut in Japan, as I talked about in the last episode. Mm -hmm. And one day when I was back in Sweden, sleeping, my phone started buzzing. Uh, and I woke up and it was around 4 a.m. <laughs> At first I was a bit irritated and thought, who the hell is waking me up in the middle of the night, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, I looked at my phone uh, and I can say that I definitely woke up immediately. First, I saw a notification that said, Gact followed you back on Twitter. Wow. Yeah, and uh, I thought I was still dreaming. And then it said, you have a new DM. Oh my God. Yeah, and, and it was a DM from Gact. And he wrote something like, long time no see, hope you're doing well. I'm having dinner with a mutual friend right now, so come over. And it was really hard to believe at first, uh, but I was in Sweden, so I replied and thanked him for the invitation and said that it would be difficult for me to come over. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then he gave me his phone number and said that I could contact him anytime. After that, we were messaging every day. So he told me that from now on, I'm his little brother. Uh, he really became like a big brother to me. He listened to my worries and helped me through tough times. He even helped me correct some Japanese errors in the lyrics I was writing. So uh, every time I went to Japan, I went to dinner with him and sometimes went to his house for a cup of tea. Mm. And when I was writing my first album, I got stuck on a song. The music was done, but I couldn't come up with the lyrics. So I asked him if he had any ideas. Then he said that he could write the lyrics for me if I wanted to. Wow. And of course, I said yes, that would be awesome. When he was done writing the lyrics, he said that he really liked the song and that he wanted to release it as his own song as well, as the lead track for his best of album. Wow. That was really unbelievable for me. Uh, but of course I accepted. I mean, how cool is that for a 17 year old? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. So he released that song on his album and uh, on the Japanese version of my album, we did it as a duet. And that is the song uh, Sakura Chiru. Okay. Or Sa Sakura Falling on my English version. In the same year, I was having my tour final in Sweden and I asked him if he wanted to come see it, if he had time to spare. I told him I would pay for everything, I just wanted him to see 
what I had accomplished in Sweden, mm -hmm. since he was there supporting me and believing in me even before I actually made it. Mm. And he said, sure, if you want me to, I will come. And then he proposed that we could sing Sakura together on stage. Wow. Yeah, and uh, that of course made me really happy. And I said, yes. Uh, so he came to Sweden and we sang two songs together on stage for my tour final. After the show, we went to my hometown in the tour bus and he stayed there for a couple of days. It was a really surreal feeling to walk the streets of my small hometown of Sundsvall with my mentor and role model. <laughs> uh, we even went to my grandmother's house and had homemade meatballs. <laughs> and that's something I will never forget. From that point, I've sung at two of his birthdays, one time in 2014 for his fan event, and uh, one time last year on his birthday live show where we sang Sakura together for the first time since 2013. Mm. Uh, I've also played guitar in one of his music videos called uh, Daybreakers oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, back in 2014, I think. So he's a big inspiration to me in so many ways. Uh, his way of living is inspiring and he's always pushing me to become better and work harder. I consider myself very lucky to have this relationship with him and uh, I'm so very grateful for everything he's done for me. Mm. And just knowing that he's watching makes me feel like I have to do my very best at all mm. times. Yeah. The funny thing is also that Hyde, uh, that Mitsugi was talking about, mm. is very good friends with Gakt, right? <laughs> so uh, our stories interconnect in a funny way. Yeah, that, that's funny because Gakt and Hyde are good friends. And those are the two people that had the most impact on our lives. Yeah. And then you and me became friends, just like them. So it's like friendception. Yeah, it's really cool to put it like that. So uh, speaking about friendception, do you like the movie Inception? <laughs> of course, I love that movie. So let's talk about movies then. Yeah, yeah, sounds good. Uh, so uh, you first. Uh, okay, to put it simply, I'm a huge movie nerd. <laughs> uh, yeah, I've kind of noticed that. You go to the cinema like every week. <laughs> yeah. so every time I call you, you're like, I'm going to see a movie, talk to you later. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. Yeah, I've loved movies since I was a child. Mm -hmm. I love movies to the same degree as I love music, maybe. I've always looked up to people who make movies, write the scripts and think about the story. Mm -hmm. I also respect the actors yeah. and the people operating the cameras. If you put everything together, it's a mix of different art forms mm -hmm. blended into one single piece of art. Yeah. For example, in a movie you have the music, yeah. the acting, and some people may not think this way, but I really believe that acting is a form of art. Yeah. And then you have the photography. You have to think about the angles lighting, etc. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As a person who loves art, I think that movies are a form of media which incorporates all forms of art into a masterpiece. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree. Just like you, I've uh, also been in a drama series and saw the whole process behind the making of a show like that. Yeah. Everybody is very hardworking and skilled and uh, every single detail is important for the final outcome mm -hmm. that people are going to watch. Yeah. So take out one piece and everything falls apart. Mm. It truly is a difficult thing. And I also respect people who are able to make these things happen. Mm. For that, the project managers and producers should have a lot of respect too. They can usually be forgotten when talking about film, mm. but without them, the projects would never see the light of day. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I really think so too. If I'm gonna name a movie di director that mm -hmm. I really like, I have a lot of them, but the first that comes to mind is Quentin Tarantino. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it may sound a bit cliche, but I really do admire his style and him as a human being. Yeah, yeah. When Kill Bill was released, I was still 12 years old yeah. and I was intrigued by the way of expression. I had never seen anything like it before. I think I watched it about 10 times in a row. 
So I started researching about him and watched Pulp Fiction and Reservoir Dogs.、Oh, yeah. And even though I watched a lot of movies since then, Reservoir Dogs is still my absolute favorite movie of all time.、Mm. So,、uh, what is it about Reservoir Dogs that m a k e you feel、mm. that way? Yeah, okay.、Uh, the, the movie is about a bank robbery. Yeah. But they never actually show the bank. <laughs> Oh, yeah. yeah, this was Tarantino's first movie as a director.、Mm -hmm. um, he had been writing screenplays before this movie, but never had it.、Mm -hmm. So he thought that if his first movie as a director didn't sell, this may be his last movie. Oh, really? And because of that, he wanted to make a movie completely in his own way, the way he liked it. Yeah. Just this one time to try it. If this was going to be his last movie, He wanted it to be a movie in his original style. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. He thought that people had already seen movies about bank robberies before. Yeah. So he decided not to show the actual robbery, but the stories of the people involved before and after the robbery. Oh, yeah, yeah. And he really goes into depth for every single character. Yeah. This is really a movie about people, not the robbery itself. The way He creates characters that have the depth of real people. It's something I admire. And at the end, every character's story tangles together into the climax.、Mm -hmm. It's hard to describe, but I really recommend watching it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I haven't seen it actually, but、uh, I guess I have to now. Yeah, let's watch it tonight. I bring the popcorn. Tonight? Yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll see about that. I kind of have to get this. Podcast up, you know. Yeah, okay. So, do you have a favorite movie? Yeah, yeah, of course.、Mm -hmm. I love the Lord of the Rings trilogy.、Uh, yeah. I、uh, still remember watching the first one when I was six years old.、Mm -hmm. And my mom didn't want me to see it, but、uh, I, I watched it at my dad's place anyway. And from the first time I saw it, I was hooked. And I、mm -hmm. watched it like once a day for several weeks. And you never get tired of your favorite movie when you're that young. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know this feeling. Yeah, so it opened a new world for me,、mm. and I didn't want to leave it. It had a big impact on my life.、Yeah. And I don't think I understood it at the time,、uh, but it certainly changed how I see the world on、mm. a subconscious level.、Mm. Sure, it's a story about magic and good and evil and stuff like that, but that's only the surface.、Yeah. There's a deeper meaning to the story, which、mm. I figured out when I got a bit older. The hobbits are small,、mm. right? Yeah. And I think Tolkien made them that way for a reason. It's very symbolical. Yeah, yeah.、Uh, they are peace loving people that l i k e s the comfort of home.、Mm. Uh, but the story is that when they challenge themselves and go out on the journey of their lives, they are braver than anyone else.、Mm. And in the end, they defeat the biggest evil in the world when no one else could.、Yeah. So, the morale of the story is one very small person can achieve great things no matter the obstacles. And I think that had a huge impact on my philosophy of life in general. And、uh, I didn't realize it until I had grown up. But stories are powerful, powerful things and can change you forever. Yeah, yeah. You know, I also love、uh, Marvel comics and movies. And yeah, I, I, I feel. <laughs> 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 and yeah, yeah, I feel the same thing. Yeah, I have many Marvel movies left to watch since I promised you to watch all of them. Yeah, you do. So、uh, let's talk about that in an another episode. Okay. So that's unfortunately all the time we have tonight. We're both very busy at the moment, so we have to go. But we will do more of those in the future, definitely.、Mm. Yeah. If you want to stay updated, you can follow me on Instagram at Yohio and Twitter at Yohio underscore Disrain. You can follow Mitsugi on Instagram at Mr. Mitsugi and Twitter at Mitsugi underscore MRM, Mr. M. I hope you found this episode interesting, and we'll see you next time. This was Yohio and Mitsugi. Bye bye. Bye bye.